All right, so let's start working on our navigation and implement the logout functionality. So if we go back to our project and open our main.view, we want to have a section here that is specific to logged in users and another section that is only for the guest users. So inside this wrapper, which has the login and register, I'm just going to add a p tag and say auth just so we have something to work with. And if we go back to website, you can see the text. Now we want to see this auth text only if we are logged in and see these other buttons if we are not logged in. So for the guest users. In order to do that, we need to expose the user to inertia as a global property or a shared property. At the moment, if we take a look at our view dev tools and the inertia component, and then under props, we have errors, but there is nothing else. So in order to create shared data or global properties and expose them to the whole inertia app, we can use handle inertia request middleware. And this middleware was created when we installed inertia. So because we used our starter kit, this was already there. But again, if you want to know what is exactly going on here, you can watch Laravel inertia view playlist. And we go through all of this step by step. Basically in this share method that we have in this inertia request middleware, we can create key value pairs and that would be exposed to the whole application. So in this array, we want to delete this comment and I'm going to create an auth property that is going to be set to an array. And within that, we will have a user key and the value for that is going to be request user. So of course, this will give us the actual user instance if they are logged in. Otherwise, it's going to be null. Now, just by adding this, if we go back to our application and reload, and we need to close this dev tools and open it again. Anyway, if you take a look at inertia again under props, notice now we have an auth object and under that we have user and it is our logged in user because we logged in in the previous video. And so we can still see the information. Now, if you don't want to expose all of this information to your front end application, you can simply chain other methods here. For example, you can say only, and let's say we just want the email. And if we reload this, so let's do the same thing. Inertia props auth user. You notice we only have the email. So this is your preference. What do you want to expose to the front end? But let's say we just want to expose the name. And I think that's all we need for the purpose of this application. But you can decide what you want to expose here. So we can close that middleware. And now we have access to page props. So for example, in our markup, instead of this auth text, if I add curly brackets and say page dot props dot auth and user, and let's say name and go back to our website, you notice that the name of this user is up there. Our dev tool is still showing the email because again, this is broken. So I'm just going to close it. We don't need it, but it is working. We are grabbing the username. And if we just say user, it will give us the actual object. And that is because we are exposing only the name. So this is how we can access that in the markup. But if we want to access it within the script tag, we need to use the use page hook or function from inertia. So let's say const page, and we will set this to use page from inertia package. And to make this easier to use, we can even have a user property or just a name and set this to compute it from view. So it needs to be imported and then pass a callback function here. And the value of that will be from page props auth user. All right, so now down here, instead of all of this text, we can just say user. So going back, you can see it gives us the name equals to John. So if I want to grab the name, then we will see the name. So this is easier and that's what we want to use. Now, what I'm going to do, create another div and add we if directive on this one and say, if user is true, then show this P tag. Otherwise, so adding another div with V else, we want to show everything else. So we can move this closing div tag after the registration link. So going back to our website, you can see we only see the name. And if we log out, we would see login and register. So now what I would like to add here is a drop down menu for the user that can have dashboard profile and the logout instead of putting them all next to each other. So for this, we need to just kind of take a step back from PHP and Laravel and focus just on view and JavaScript. So let me make some comments here. So it's easier to see what we are doing. So that is our auth section. This is our guest section. And we are going to work on this auth section. 
First, I'm going to add the class relative to this auth wrapper. Then I will have a div here and I want to apply some classes to it. So we have flex item center and some gap. We have padding and some rounded corners and hover effect and the cursor is set to pointer because this will be the button that will show the drop down menu. Now inside of this div, we will have the username. So we can move that P tag and an icon. So the icon I want to use is this one. And if we go to font awesome and search for down, uh, this is the one I'm using. So angle down, if you want to grab the same thing, you can click on this I tag and just use it here. If I save this in our website, we have this button right here. And at the moment, nothing happens, of course. So now we are still inside this auth wrapper. I'm going to create another comment and say user drop down menu. So then we will have another div here. And again, I'm going to apply some classes. So we are setting the position to absolute, which means it is relative to the wrapper and some Z index. So it will be on top and some values for the top and right, some background and border and a width of 40. And for now, we just want to add the text logout. So this is our dropdown and we will style this properly. But for now, let's just leave it as it is. We want to apply the logic to hide and show that dropdown. So for that, I'm going to create a ref. Up in the script tag, I can have a show variable and I will set this to ref from view. And the initial value is going to be false. So back to our auth wrapper right here. On this div, which is our button, we want to add the click directive. And when we click on this, we just want to set that show variable to the opposite of whatever it is. So we just negate it and say, if show is true, then set it to false. If it's false, set it to true. Then on the drop down menu, we can set the V show directive to that show variable, which is going to be false at first. Now, going back to our website, if we reload, you can see the drop down is gone. And if we click on this, it will appear and disappear. But one thing about Vue.js is that there is no click outside modifier. So if you click outside of this wrapper, nothing happens. Even if you click on the button, it would not close this drop down. So you have to do it manually. Now let's do this. So first we can add the click event and say, if we click on something in this wrapper, then set the show to false. So this will fix the problem of clicking on the items. So if we have, for example, logout and click on it, then it's gone. Now we need to address the click outside. So what we are going to do here, we are going to create a div right above the header. So it's outside of our navigation and I'm calling it overlay. We set the V show property to that show variable up here. So again, this is false. And so when we click on the button, this overlay will appear now. When we click on the overlay itself, we will set the show to false. And we are setting the size of this overlay to cover the whole page. So we are using fixed position and inset zero. So it will be top zero, left zero, and left and right zero as well. And the Z index 40, so it will be below our dropdown. And to show you how this works, I'm going to add background here, for example, red 400. And if we reload, you can see we have our website. When we open our dropdown, we can only see this one. So if we click anywhere, it should close the dropdown. And that's exactly what we want. So technically we have a click outside. So we have our dropdown menu and we are basically just playing with that show variable that we defined up here. So we are just setting it to true or false through different actions. Now let's work on our logout functionality. Normally in a blade template, we would add a form because this has to be submitted through a post request. But with inertia, we can use the same link and submit it through a post request. So let's have our link first and we will have logout for the text and for the classes. We are going to set the display to block with full and some padding and some hover effect and also aligning the text to the left. So if we take a look at it now, it is like this. Now, just so we have something else in that dropdown, I'm going to add another link. So I'm just copy pasting that. And for the text, let's say dashboard. Of course, we don't have a dashboard, but for now, let's leave it as it is. So if we reload, there we have it. We have dashboard and logout. So now our link is just a link at the moment. 
First, we want to make sure we submit this as a button. So we can use the as prop and then say button. That means you cannot open this on a new page because it's a post request. So we want to prevent that. Then we can set the method to post because we want to submit it through a post request. And lastly, we can set the href and bind that to route and logout. Now at the moment, we don't have this route, but we will create it in a moment. So let's create our route. First, we need to go to our auth.php. This is where we have our authentication routes. And the logout route is going to be protected by an auth middleware. So what I'm going to do is to copy this first line and paste it down here, then close that curly brackets, parentheses, and semicolon. So for the middleware, we want to say auth, and then inside the curly brackets, we can create our logout route. So first I'm going to copy this comment and say logout. Then we want to say route post. We will go to forward slash logout and we want to use the same authenticate controller. And the method we want to use, we would call destroy. Now we can also give it a name, logout and end the statement. So let's create this destroy method in our authenticate controller. And we can say public function destroy and let's just die and dump log out like this. Now let's go back to main to save this document. But I also noticed again, I used the router. So I keep doing this and this should be route. All right, so back to our website, we have our logout. If we press on it, we see that die and dump. That means it's working properly. If you hold down the control on your keyboard and then click on this one, you can see we still see the same thing because we said to treat this as a button. All right, so all is left is to actually log out the user. So back to our destroy method. First, we want to accept the request because we are going to use it. Then we can use the auth facade, which is already imported and log out the user. And after we log out the user, we want to invalidate the session and also regenerate the CSRF token. So again, these are part of Laravel documentation. So we want to grab request and then session and then invalidate. Again, we want to grab the request session and this time we want to regenerate token. And lastly, because the user is logged out, we want to redirect them to another page, for example, home page. So we can either pass the URL like this, or we can use the route helper function and pass the name of the route. If we've done everything correctly, this should work and we should see the navigation changes when we log out. So pressing on logout, and we are getting the error that we are calling the only method on the user instance, but it doesn't exist because we just logged out. So I made a mistake here and I forgot to check if the user actually exists and then call the method. In fact, I remember in the inertia documentation, they talk about this. If we go to share data on their website, we have this piece of code here. So let me just copy this and then go back to our project. Let's open our handle inertia request. And sorry about this detour, but mistakes happen. And then I'm going to replace this statement with what we have from inertia documentation. And I'm just going to change this to user. So we still have our auth object. And then within that we have user, but this time we are not returning the request user directly, meaning we don't assume that the user already is logged in, but we check first through the function. We check if the user is available then we will return ID, name, and email. Let's say we only need ID and name, so we don't really need anything else. But if that is not true, so if there is no user, we would just return null. So sorry about that detour. Now, if we go back to our website and give it a reload, this time it works properly. So let's log in again. I have only one user, so I can do this, log in. We are back to the home page. We can see our drop down menu and we can log out again and everything works properly. So a few things I noticed we need to add and that is just CSS. First, we don't have a space between these two buttons. Let's close everything except main.view. So on the guest div wrapper, we want to add the class attribute and set a space x6. So this will solve that problem. Let's log in again. And I want to keep this button active when the drop down is open. So let's go back to that button, which is this div right here. 
and we want to apply some conditional classes. So again, we can use colon class and pass an object here and set the background to a slate 700 if that show property or variable is true. So this way, if we go back to our website, you can see if the menu is open, then that button has an active state. But if we close it, then it's closed. So that is about logging out and updating our navigation. Now in the future videos, we will work on email verification. So the users need to verify their account. Otherwise they cannot access dashboard, for example. We will work on forgot password and also reset password. So see you all at the next video.